Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to The Debrief, a weekly Q&A show from Sandals Church and Pastor Matt Brown with real answers to tough questions from the Bible. My name's Maria, and I'm filling in today for our friendly uh, Debrief hosts that are on vacation. So we're here with the PMB. What's up, PMB? Yeah, actually, Stephanie's on maternity. Oh, she is. You know what? She is. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think she's vacationing. She had a baby. No vacation there. That is true. I saw Ruth. Have you seen Ruth yet? Yes, oh my so gosh! Did you guys see Goonies when you were kids? Mm-hmm. Yeah, baby Ruth. <laughs> baby Ruth. <laughs> so every time I see her, I'm just like, baby Ruth. Baby Ruth. Shout out to baby Ruth. <laughs> Dude, Goonies, Goonies is like one of the great movies of the '80s. Classic. It's so it good. Great. Yeah. We're actually talking about the Type Nine today. Oh, That's sorry. The last episode. Yeah, getting us back on track. Here. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Type Nine, the Peacemakers. So we have some amazing Peacemakers in the room. Would you guys go ahead and introduce yourself and what you? Do here at Sandals Church. My name is Matt Ritchie, and I am the music lead. And my name is Dan Crowley, and I'm the spiritual formation pastor. Nice. We're so glad to have you today and learn from you and hear about the nines. Um, to begin, why don't we hear from our resident expert on Ooh, the Enneagram, yes. Pastor Matt. Would you tell us about the nine? Yeah, so nine sit, when you look at the, the chart, nine sit at the top uh, to the right. And so the, the idea is that they have... Uh, the nine has a great perspective of all of the other numbers. And so that's the beauty of the nine is that they can see both sides to things. And so when healthy, uh, they're spiritual gurus, um, nice. great counselors, um, very, very great at listening to you and really helping you find out um, your heart. So it's not necessarily that nines give great advice. It's that they help you discover your own advice. And so that's the beauty of the nine. Uh, and that's why, you know, Dan is so incredible at... Um, uh, spiritual formation and spiritual direction at our church, because that's the difference between uh, maybe what we look for when we go to somebody for advice versus spiritual direction. A spiritual director helps you find what God is saying in your life. And that's just mm. a really, really healthy nine can do that. Um, great mediators, listeners, um, deep thinkers, feelers, um, just really, really aware and in touch oftentimes with the feelings of others and when healthy, the feelings of themselves. So when unhealthy, uh, they are oftentimes so in touch with everyone else that they lose sight of themselves and their own feelings. Mm. Um, a struggle for the nine is being declarative. And so what that means is making clear statements. Yes, no, uh, I don't like this. I do like that. I want to go there. I don't want to go there. Because oftentimes uh, when unhealthy nines maybe, you know, don't they're not aware of whether or not they care mm. or not. And so they have to learn to find their own voice. And that's really, really important because they're so good at listening to everyone else. Sometimes it's really, really hard to listen to themselves. Um, you know, so when healthy, nines move at a steady pace and um, get things done and accomplish things. When unhealthy, they procrastinate, become lazy, uh, and they 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 literally can become a couch potato. So that's mm. the negative of that. So um, they need to avoid conflict. Um, um, and so, right, that's on the good side. The beauty of that is they're very peaceful people. So when you have a nine that's healthy, they're going to be a good friend. If you're married to a nine, you know, there's not going to be a lot of conflict. They're going to do, um, you know, what what it takes to get things done. And, and, you know, that's just just real beauty. You know, Matt was talking before we started the show just about his childhood, and he was just going to do whatever his parents wanted him to do when there was a conflict. And that's the beauty of that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you're raising a child that's a nine, um, you know, they're going to want to avoid conflict and, and please you in that in order to make that happen. The negative side of that is, is that they can become stubborn. Mm-hmm. And I use the illustration of the elephant, the sitting elephant. So, uh, one of the things I think that nines even are not aware in them in of themselves is how powerful they are. So they really sit in the power triad. So the power triad is the eight, the nine, and the one. And so um, we think of the eight as the powerful person. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes we mistakenly think of the nine as weak. They're not weak. They're just not interested in war. Um, mm-hmm. But what they will do is they will passively fight a war. And so they're passive aggressive nature where the eight and the one are going to be aggressive. So the one's going to come at you with what you should be doing. And the eight is going to come at with you with what they want you to do. Like, (laughs) I want you to do this and you will do this. The nine is going to listen to what you want them to do, but they will do what they want to do. And so, um, you know, and that's the other thing is you have to be, that's why it's so important. If you're in relationship with a nine, they can listen and you feel like they agree. So that's what you need to, you need to get them to, to, to do you agree? Cause like you're nodding your head right now. Most of us assume that that's, that's approval, but mm-hmm. with the nine, it just means I hear you. Mm. I hear you. And I can see your perspective, <laughs> but it doesn't mean that's what they're going to do. So it can be frustrating if in your relationship with a nine, 
where you feel like, well, I thought you were with me. And they're like, well, I was with you listening. And I can see, with you, I right. can see, I can see your perspective and your point of view and, and, um, I can see how you could get there, but I'm not going to do that. You know? And so that's being declared they need to say, you know, I'm, I'm, I see your perspective, but I'm not doing that. And so that's just really, really important. And so, um, again, you know, so many people, you just got to understand it's not, it's not the number that's important. It's your health that's important. And so mm -hmm. you want to become healthy. And so when nines, you know, they can do great things. And that's why I picked Abraham. Abraham is the founder of our faith and, is a great negotiator and peacemaker for God. When he's healthy, right, he, he, he's doing great things and he's negotiating land acquisitions between Lot yeah, right. and himself. Yeah. I mean, massive land deal. He's a real estate, you know, mm -hmm. giant, you know. Um, when unhealthy, he can't negotiate between Hagar mm -hmm. and Sarah or, or he struggles, you know, uh, confronting and having conflict with Pharaoh. And so um, the way out of that is, you know, well, tell him you're my sister, which is kind of true right? Half sister. Yeah. So, uh, and if Kinda. that grosses you out, welcome to the ancient yeah. world. So, <laughs> I was going to sing Father Abraham. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, you know, there, there's real beauty there. And, and I think, you know, uh, mediation is important. Jesus Christ is our mediator. Mm. Um, he hears us, right? He helps us when we, we don't even know what, we, you know, we want to pray. I mean, Christ is always in there. So there's a lot of nine in Christ. Um, you know, people ask me, which number is Jesus? Well, he's all of them. Yeah. So, um, because he's the perfect human being and he reflects God perfectly. Several times in the Bible, it says Christ is the image of God. Like it, it, he's, he's like the Xerox copy of God. It's, that's who he is. And so all of the numbers reflect a, a key character of God. And so hmm. Jesus reflects all of those perfectly because he's God's son and uh, he's the spitting image of God. Right, so it's it's absolutely amazing. So, yeah, I'm glad to have you guys here. Thanks, yeah. me. Glad to be here. We had a uh, kind of a general question. You were talking about the eight, nine, and one. Those uh, yeah. the powerful grouping yeah. of three there. Yeah. David said the nine wings seem complete polar opposite of the nine like true character. Can you explain what a nine wing eight and a nine wing one looks like? Yeah. So again, at Saddles Church, we don't emphasize the wings. I think the wings are very unhelpful in terms of identifying who you are, unless the wing right next to it is really, really high and influential in your life. Um, so for example, what are, what what would you guys say is the second highest on, on your score, on your Enneagram score? Well, for me, it's a six. Okay. And, and so I, and I see that cocktail of nine, six right. more prevalent than nine, mm -hmm. one. Right. Because my one's like in the low thirties. Right. Yeah. Oh, wow. How about you? Yeah. I think five would be the next one for me. It's okay. not, it's not super high, but I think that's, well, what, do, you, what do you know what your five score was? I was in the middle range somewhere. Okay, like 50, nine 60. was the only one that was like way up really there. High. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's really, really important. So um, I think I think the beauty of the enneagram in its inception is its vagueness. I think um, you know in our Western culture, wanting to make everything scientific and specific, um, you know, all of the arrows and where you go and how that works is it, it, just really not been helpful for me. Um, so I would say a, an eight nine. Um, can be very, very powerful, but slothful when unhealthy. So they'll mm. be a workaholic, um, you know, um, incredibly um, powerful in terms of like their business life, their professional life, but they'll be out of shape. So they'll be, you know, they, they're, they're, they're not going to take care of themselves when they get home. So they're going to eat unhealthy. They're not going to take care of themselves. And um, mm. I got to be very careful because I was going to mention someone that you guys all know that's an eight <laughs> wing nine. Um and, and that's a guess. I, I, they've not taken the test and I'm not seeing the, their results. Um, versus, okay, so that's um, eight, nine. So nine, eight um, would be, and again, it's it's how much is, is the wing at play. But the nine, eight is going to be a need to avoid conflict, but they're really gonna push towards that. So they're gonna, you're gonna push towards ending all conflict. So the power is gonna come out in, we will have peace, right? Oh, <laughs> you know, so that's, that's yeah. where it's going to come from. And so- uh, you're going to see um, the uh, the power of the eight, which oftentimes looks like anger, and so we'll get to that with the nine wing one. Hmm. But it, it's really not um, anger; it's powerful in saying, "You will do what I want." So that that that's what's weird, and 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 so that's what again I, I would say: look at your scores. So the nine one is very very angry, and and nine ones, if they have a high one, are oftentimes totally unaware of their anger. It's really really hard for a nine to resonate with anger because they don't burst out. They don't explode. They don't lose it. Like how many times would you guys say in your life, like you have, ex 
exploded like with anger or rage. Has that even ever happened? I think it's a handful of times in my life. And I can think of those specific situations as like, okay, I'm going to get over it. 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 It's kind of like stuffing, like tamping yeah. down stuff in like a cannon. Like you're right. just like getting that ready, getting that ready. And like at some point it's got a release. Right. And I think that's, that's what it's been. And then as soon as it does, like I see what it does or I see what it feels like and I hate it. And I'm like, mm. oh, I don't, and it just right. kind of feeds that cycle yeah. again. And so, yeah, it's not all the time for sure. How about you? I, I, I can't even think of a handful. Like I can remember one time specifically, and it was, I got finally had enough with my daughter's stacking the dishwasher the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> and I lit her up like a Christmas tree. And then when I was done, I was like, I am such a jerk. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. So it's very, very uncommon. And so, um, so, th and that's the challenge of the nine is being aware of their anger. Mm -hmm. Um, so, right. Um, the underlying emotion of the 891 is anger. So you have to find that. And, and Matt nailed it. It's the stuffing. Yeah. Because you are humans. You do get hurt. You do mm -hmm. get offended. But in the need to avoid mm -hmm. conflict, you're pressing that down and pressing that down. The way it typically comes out is passive aggressiveness. But it can leak out in um, maybe not an explosion like an eight would have or a three would have. You know, uh, I mean, when I pop, it's glorious. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's it, you know, it's, a deal. it's, it's bad. Right. So, um, cause I remember I said, I have zero nine, my wife and I have zero nines in our household. So we need, we need more peace. Um, nice. so, 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 so that's the thing. So the, not, especially the, the nine, one or the one nine, they gotta really be in touch with their anger. Mm. So the, so the eight is going to feel more free to express their anger because the, the right power, um, it's outward. just, yeah, it's more outward and yeah. hey, you, you need to do this. Whereas the nine is going to need to stuff that. And so um, they, they've got to be aware of that. And so really for the nine, it turns into like bitterness. Like, oh, you've done all these things to me. I'm storing all of this away. Um, you know, I, I picked the, the animal, the elephant for a reason. They say an elephant never forgets. Yeah. <laughs> never forgets. And so that's the nine. I can remember all of the times you caused me conflict. And I'm stuffing that and I'm placing that in. And so, I, you know, I, I'm going to be resistant to you mm. passively, uh, but I'm going to be resistant. And, and so the nine really needs to, as they become more aware and more awake, getting in touch with their anger and, and saying that. So my wife's high one, high, high, high one, um, her, her dominant, I think she's like 99, six, and then like 98, one. And when we were in counseling together, um, you know, my wife's never going to use profanity. That's just not who she is. And the counselor is like talking about something that happened to her in her childhood. And he's like, say it, say it. And she's like, that was, that was really lame. And he's like, no, say it, say it. What was it? And he wow. finally got her to, to cuss. And he's like, yes. And he repeats her. That was, and he used the, the expletive. That's what that was because the one has to be aware mm. of that anger that's mm -hmm. deep, deep inside of, like, that's not right that happened to a kid, and I should be angry. Yeah. I mean, God gets righteous angry, anger, right. righteous yeah. anger. Yeah. And so um, the lie of the nine is, is that all anger is evil and all conflict is bad. Mm. And, and, mm -hmm. and, you, and here's the thing, if you're a nine, avoiding conflict can actually cause greater conflict, mm -hmm. yes. right? Greater <laughs> conflict. And so... Um, like, for example, you know, um, you know, we're talking a lot about this week, you know, Trump and what's happening to Kim Jong-un, you know, the, the peace agreement, and I don't want to be political, but what we did with Iran was, was right in the name of peace, we potentially put many, many countries in, in harm's way. Mm -hmm. You know, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Israel, Syria, Jordan, you know, well, Syria is a mess, but all of these countries, right, in the name of peace, we may have sparked literally a like world war in the Middle East. And so you gotta be really, really careful. Same thing, appeasing Hitler. Mm -hmm. So Chamberlain, right? We've declared peace in our time. He's probably a nine. And then you have Winston Churchill, the eight going, we gotta fight this guy. You know, Do we gotta kill this guy. Right. And so yeah. Israel pushes the eight out of the way until they needed him. And Chamberlain, right, is at the forefront declaring peace in our time. And so you have to be very, very careful like in confronting your children. I actually think you as a nine, both of you are very, very, good at confronting your children. Um, so, and um, 
I don't that, feel that way a lot. Oh, <laughs> so no? okay. Well, I've, see, I've seen you, you know, hey, don't do that. Or, I have too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So I've seen both of you discipline your kids. Yeah. And so for, nines have a hard time oftentimes confronting uh, people that they love and they care about when they feel like something's been wrong. And so, you know, the nine's compass for what's right and wrong has to be what's right and wrong. And then mm -hmm. you have to speak to that, declare, hey, mm -hmm. that, you know, you, it doesn't have to look like me where I, I just want to get in somebody's face. You know, nine has to, you know, stand on the truth. That is not okay. That is not right. Um, you know, I think mm. Bob Goff is a very healthy, he has high nine, he's also three and seven, crazy seven. Um, yeah, he's really a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. But, you know, um, like for example, when he dealt with the witch doctors in mm -hmm. um, Africa, yeah. he said, look, you need to stop killing. So, so, you know, we talk about racism in America. They, they kill albino children in Africa. So they, because they're white. And the witch doctors cut off their like their ears and stuff, and they wear them around their necks as a sign of their power. And so he told these witch doctors, "I, I don't want to hurt you. I don't want. I don't want. But if you kill another kid, I will put you to death." And he actually had that authority. He was literally the judge over there, and he had to put witch doctors to death because they wouldn't stop mm. killing kids. And so, right at, at some point, you know, you have to say, yeah. "This is not okay." Mm. Right. And um, so, you know, and I think in our American judicial system, we have a lot of unhealthy nines running laws. Mm -hmm. And that's not always the best because a society has to be able to deal with evil. And so an unhealthy nine is gonna have a hard time dealing with evil. And that's why you need all of us in the church. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like uh, I was just finished First Corinthians on vacation and the apostle Paul challenges Corinth, probably a lot of high nines. And he says, you have a man in your church that is doing things that, Corinthians think is immoral. He, remember the words? Hand that man over to Satan and kick him out of the church. Or I'm gonna come personally and right. deal with you, yeah. right? I mean, Paul, man, his eight just comes out, but they, no one in the church would deal with it because they're afraid. And you know, I, yeah, I've only had to kick one guy out of our church in 20 years, just one guy. And I said, you can mm. never come here again, but you have to be willing to do that because, yeah. you know, Nines have to protect the sheep too. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Matt was saying something about that earlier about action and right action. Yeah. I mean, that's where I feel as a nine, I can get lost sometimes is uh, to where laziness is a part of it, but it's almost like it's a hard time deciphering right action in the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And so even when you, as a nine, you start to grow like, okay, I'm going to act more. I'm going to be more assertive. I'm going to be more direct. Then it's figuring out like, oh man, I was... I was, that was wrong action. You know, I was active, yeah. but that wasn't the right way to do it. And I think that's where mm -hmm. um, a growth point where I think especially in the moment, like nines can really struggle because it's mm -hmm. just not a muscle you're used to, to using. Mm -hmm. And so you, yeah. in the moment you're like, how oh, does this work? You're like <laughs> that, that baby fawn, you know, that's kind of figuring out yeah. how to walk mm -hmm. and everyone else is like, I don't know. Sometimes it feels like, why don't you just walk? Like, what's the problem? And he's like, I'm, I'm going to make it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think yeah. I think for me, like that, that's been the biggest guiding factor because I feel like um, getting married and having kids was it, that just by way of like life, like had to kill a lot of laziness in me, yeah. um, outright laziness, like sitting around not doing stuff. Um, but then as I've reflected the last couple of years, I realized like, oh, right action, like what's the right thing to? I don't want to be assertive or act in in the wrong things, mm -hmm. um, and so that's a learning process for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Man, shoot, I had a great point and I lost it because I was listening to you. Ooh, good job. That's good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and again, you know, I can't emphasize enough as nines, you have to press into conflict because literally the people that you love, their life hangs in the balance. And so um, so now I remember what I was gonna say. So, so the beauty of the nine, right, is seeing multiple sides. Mm. That's what causes parallelization. Mm -hmm. The nine sees I could do this or I could do that or I could do this or I could do that or I could do... And they get lost in you know, the multiple choice, mm. so to speak, um, rather than, you know, so like nines probably don't do well on a multiple choice test because they can see how that could be the right answer, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Seriously, nice. right? You're like, well, I mean, that's kind of true. And it's like, right, wrong. Um, so, um, you know, th that that's how I think a nine can get totally lost in themselves is they they see all of them, the multiple choice. And so think of like a, a young nine coming up in the world. What am I supposed to do with my life? And, and so young people today are just, over saturated with choice, like, and, and they're paralyzed. The, mm -hmm. Our culture is paralyzed. 
Mm-hmm. Nobody, and then and then we don't help people out at all. We say, "Well, find your passion." Yeah. <laughs> well, how does that help me feed and clothe myself and take care yeah. of my family? <laughs> you know, I, it's just we're just so, you know, choices. You know, again, so if you're a nine, you know, you really got to limit your choices. You know, like when I met Dan, um, he was going to school and he was in this bonehead program. <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> and I, right. So okay, remember, guys, I'm an eight three, and so I was in the wrong program. So Dan is, yeah, it was a good program. It was a good program. So Dan is get, here. Here he is, Dan. He's okay. So he's leveraging his financial future for his family, right? Three kids, wife, changing career, mid thirties, right? So I mean, this is a big wow. deal. This is a yeah. big step. And he tells me his program he's in, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> That's the wrong program. <laughs> I'm like, you need to go to this one. And he's like, oh. And it was tailor made for who he, who right. he is. Awesome. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and praise God, he listened. Can you imagine? You'd be the worst apologist ever I would be. in history, <laughs> right? Because apologists that are the argumentative. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right? right. They're argumentative. They're, I, 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 have to, I, hope yeah. I have some friends that are apologists. I, so I mean this in a loving way. They're a little <laughs> jerkish. Right. Like, right, Dan, that is not Dan. Not at all. You know, Dan is just like, you know, I'm like, what are you doing? The funny thing, the funny thing about that was when you said that to me, I was, I was passive aggressive inside. I was like, okay, I'm listening to you. And it took me nine months <laughs> yeah. to apply for the program. Cause <laughs> nice. I was like, you don't know me. Like yeah. we, we barely knew yeah. each other, but I was like, he doesn't know me. Yeah. You know, and my stubborn side locked in, you know, and I spent months. Looking at it, thinking about it, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so you were yeah. a, you were asking me um, beforehand, before the show started. Maria and I were having a discussion on spiritual gifts tests, which I hate. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I do I hate them. You know. So, so I, at Palm, I totally made fun of prayer ministry, which I shouldn't have done. You know. <laughs> no, no, I, no. I, I did because because I'm like like so so let, let's take prayer ministry and put it like in your home. Well, I'm not going to take out the trash. But I'm going to pray that God will bring someone that takes out the trap. And so cause my point was, true, okay, uh... prayer is great. Now tell me what you do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So faith in action. So that was the, right. the step for the nine is you've got to take faith, faith in action. Right. And we can't have a group of people that just sit around and pray. We need prayer. We need prayer, but we also need action. Um, mm. You know, I can't just every time my wife says, hey, I need you to do this, I'm going to pray about that. I, like I actually have to do things. And so for the nine, they have to do that. But I feel like my spiritual gift that I've learned is I see people and how they fit in the kingdom of God, and I see it quickly. So he made the comment, "I didn't know him," I and I and I and I didn't. It's a it's a spiritual gift that God has given me that I see people and I see how they fit in the kingdom right. of God. Mm. And so I can't tell you how many times I've been in a small group and somebody says, "I don't know what my gift is," and you and I've been in group, and mm-hmm. I'll go, "I'll tell you your gift," and yes. I just I just boom, you know, and and they're like, I'm like. That's where you need to be. And um, people were just like, oh, I never saw that. Um, you know, like my daughter, uh, my oldest, you know, she's like, I just don't know what my gift is. I was like, are you kidding me? Your gift is strength. God's made you strong. No matter what you do, you're strong. Just be strong. Yeah, girl. Yeah, right. I'm like, and I'm like, go get it, you know? Yeah. So um, it's so funny because this summer her sister is having to work for her and like, you know, Madison's whole life, she thought Kennedy should work for her anyways. And so, <laughs> so I was just like, I was just like, I was like, and now it's actually like legal. Yeah. So oldest kid. Problems. Yeah. I was like, good luck. Good luck, middle child. So, um, but yeah, but I mean, she's made to be in charge. You know, she'll, while she's going to Israel with me, she'll try to boss me around. And I was nice. like, no, you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so you guys were having the, the Israel right. meeting yeah. and she's like, don't you feel like she, she has some one? She goes, don't you feel like you should? Go to the Israel meeting. I go. I've been to Israel four times. I'm not going to. The meeting. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you can't guilt me into stuff, dude. I'm like, nah, no. That's That's so awesome. It was just funny. Man, I can see how like it would maybe feel conflicted to see so clearly on both sides being a nine. Yeah, and having to like step into that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's this thing I've been thinking lately, like to to see the big picture so well and get lost in the details. Yeah, is like maddening sometimes because yeah. you feel like. Because you really do feel stuck because I don't want to just be the big picture, but I don't want to get lost along sure. the way. And finding your way and navigating through mm-hmm. that is is a lot of growth and a lot of like good hard work. It's yeah, it's in. why I could never be a Buddhist. So, right, the yin and the yang, mm-hmm. eternally paralyzed. No, thank you. 
right? <laughs> we're, we're, Christ, we're Christians. Yeah. We're Christians, yes. right? Like God is moving. Good is winning. Evil will be defeated, right? Yeah, go ahead. So that's why, <laughs> that's, that's the beauty of the cross, right? God has declared this, this evil will end mm. and everything will become subject to right. him who has right. created everything. Preach. And um, man, he, he's Buddhist. I love him. I'm just like, you want to struggle forever, which by the way, what is their heaven? Nirvana, which means you just end feeling. Right. Mm. Yay. That's awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think thinking about that decision-making piece, you know, we can get wrapped up in, I could go this way, I could go that way. And that can be, that can be called indifference. Like I could go this way, I could go that way. And that can actually be a healthy practice when mm. we're indifferent to the decision and we're trying to discern what is the right call to make. The challenge right. for the nines is it turns to apathy which fuels our laziness, right? And so we go, well, I don't know what decision to make, so I won't make a decision at all, yeah. you know, and we become sort of lazy about it mm. or, yeah. or apathetic about it, you know? And then, like Matt said before, it's th the muscles just aren't exercised well and we're a little wobbly when it comes to even making sometimes simple decisions. Mm. Yeah. Can I just say this? I, I had several nines come up to me on Sunday and said, yeah, I just don't see laziness in my life. Mm. If you are a nine and you don't see that, you don't see yourself. And, and, and that's the thing is, he, he, here's how you know when you're real. You know when you're real when you can see your crap. If mm. you cannot see your, your crap, you cannot see yourself. Right. And so that just breaks my heart. So many people, okay, just, now, now you may have taken the test wrong. Maybe you are not a nine. But, um, you know, um, you know, I don't, I don't like the word lying or deceit. I, I, I hate that, but that's, that's the story of my life. And I have to pursue truth mm. every single day. Otherwise, you know, I'm just, I'm going to go off the deep end in that way and not be real. So um, that's just what I would say is it may, laziness may look different in your life, especially as maybe you compare yourself to some other people. You have to look at yourself. And so maybe one of the ways that laziness manifests itself like in marriage is not having the conversation mm. you need to have and going and doing something that you want to. So so laziness is really the pursuit of what I want to do and the avoidance of what I don't want to do. And so- um, yeah, And that can be really active sometimes yeah. too. I think that's yeah. where I've like talked to people and they get yeah. hung up is like laziness just has this inactive quality. I think everyone thinks of, you know, the couch potato, yeah. like you said, but I think there's plenty of times where I've been active you, you'll have those days, I don't know if you feel like this way, where you have your to-do list, you're working hard, you're putting your head down, getting stuff done all day, and then at the end of the day, you look at your to-do list and you mm -hmm. didn't do any of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, it, and it's the worst thing, yep. you're like, man, I missed it again. You know, and I think, yeah, that's that's where laziness or sometimes like when they refer to sloth, like it, it's this unawareness almost. And I think that like going back to that question about the eights and the nines mm -hmm. and the ones, like I think there's sometimes like we can all have our blind spots and it seems like, those three types are so intuitive in how they process everything mm -hmm. that if everything you do is like based in your gut and what you're acting from, like you can really, if you don't work on it, you can miss yeah. what's going on outside yeah. of so, that. So Matt's a nine five. So here's how a nine five would be lazy is he can spend all day in his head thinking about things that are very, very deep, but his wife has asked him to do three things mm -hmm. and none of those three things are done. done yeah. um, like, I just tell you a story about a guy in our church. Um, his wife was on vacation for a week doing a mission trip and they had bought a new house and I'll never forget it. Someone was going to pick up his wife from the airport and we're standing in the house and he said, oh my gosh, we need to paint the garage. I said, why? He said, it's the one thing my wife asked me to do while she was gone. And I'm literally sitting there. I'm like, you're an idiot. <laughs> Why is that not the first thing we did? <laughs> like we've had six days, six days. Do you think he had the paint for the garage purchased? No. no. I, 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 I literally was like, I'm done. Like I cannot live in your world. <laughs> and it's literally, oh, man. Uh, and it's not, and it's not like this guy isn't, it, it seems like he's always doing things. That's the thing that throws you off is, mm -hmm. You know, um, it doesn't look like laziness. No, we can stay busy with the best of yeah. them. Yeah, he reminds yeah. me of he reminds me of the rabbit from um, uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. Right. Where, are <laughs> right. Where are you going? Right. Where are you going? Nowhere. 
<laughs> so, that's so good. you know, that's the thing yeah. is, and I, I, I literally was like, we had six days, six days. And it, it just blew, it blew my mind. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. and if you're not careful, man, you're going to, your whole life's going to be gone and you're not going to have done the things you mm. need to do. And so, um, you that, know. that to do list that you talked about is so important, you know, and the days that we do check it regularly and then do the things on it, we feel like we're on top of the world. Yeah. Yep. You know, and yeah. if you think it frustrates you that we get nothing done, like we look, yeah. we look at our day and we go, what, what did I do all day? Mm -hmm. I know I was busy. Yeah. You know, but I didn't get anything yeah. done. I need to get done. And it drives us absolutely crazy inside. Yeah. You know, Pastor Matt said something a few minutes ago. He said, if you're a nine on the Enneagram and you don't see laziness in yourself, you're not seeing yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's so good because this self-discovery is like, I'm seeing myself in a light that I never have. You know, mm -hmm. like kind of almost like removing it and saying, whoa, okay, this is a thing. What are some other ways that you guys are seeing yourself through this? Like maybe your first reactions to when you scored a nine and, and, and kind of process through that, your journey. Yeah, I mean, I'll start off. Um, I think w one of the ways this has really helped me is explaining why I do some of the things that I do. I mean, there's always been that wonder, like, why do I do this? Why do I keep doing this? Why do I keep finding myself in this place? And to, to have this test, you know, and this discovery process really shed some light on that has been incredibly uh, both surprising, but also incredibly helpful for me. Mm. I mean, we were having conversations about laziness before we took the Enneagram, you and I, mm -hmm. you know, and I'd be like, I just don't see it because I feel like I'm busy all the time, you know, and as, I, mm. as I've been diving deeper into that, I see, okay, it, it is there. Like, for example, in my spiritual life, you know, I, I, one of the things I love to do is I love to read scripture mm -hmm. and I love to contemplate scripture, which is one of the things nines love to do that they love to contemplate things. Yeah. But praying, like being, like putting the effort forth to pray for somebody or for mm -hmm. something is just what I said, it's effort. And it's sometimes I don't want to do it, you know, and and a lot of times I don't, honestly. I don't I don't formulate my words and my sentences in audible prayers to God. And so when I'm healthy, though, what I do is I journal so I can stay focused mm -hmm. and I make my prayers into in my journal. So I'm praying while I'm writing. And that that's I think that's been very helpful for me and and explaining mm. why I do some of the things I do. Yeah. So yeah. let me just uh, I'll give you a second to think okay. and just jump in here. Changing anything about yourself is really hard. Mm -hmm. Amen. Like, for example, one of the things one of the things that I'm really struggling changing, and it's a physical thing, is my swimming. So you'll you'll see, you know, the lineup of an Iron Man, and I am a lot more fit than most people there, and people who are very unfit swim right by me, hmm. and it's because I swim wrong. Trying to change it is driving me crazy, and so. That's where you need the second set of eyes. Literally what you do is you hire a swim coach and they film you and they show you, but then they have to help show you how to change that. And so changing anything, slight things, things that you've been doing your whole life, mm. it's very, very different. And so changing how you eat, how you exercise, reading your Bible, going to church on a regular basis, praying, praying with your spouse, um, you know, uh, going to small group, any change is it's that's worth anything is not going to be easy. And so you just have to press into that and know that if I keep doing this over time, I'm going, I'm going to get better at this. Right. It's going to work and, um, and, and learn from your mistakes. You know, I think your mistakes and failures are your best friends. Mm -hmm. Learn from them and, and, and move forward. And so, um, you know, don't beat yourself up over, over them, beat yourself up over not learning mm -hmm. from them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, That's when you good. when you have a fight with your spouse or your friend or you flunk a test or you fail or you get fired, learn mm. and, and and move forward and uh, continually become a better person. And um, and I think that's what God wants to do in us. And I was so encouraged, you know, I'm in I'm in Second Corinthians right now in my study about just how how Paul talks about that, you know, we've been sealed in Christ and the Holy Spirit is the down payment and he is conforming us to the image of his son. Like God, God's doing that work in me. So my part, I think, in that is what do I need, how do I need to get out of my own way so that God can transform and change me and bring right. those things? And so, um, you know, and that's why I picked the verse I did um, this week, never be lazy, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. Mm. And man, just have that drive to serve God and and he's going to, he's going to bless your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Okay, what? we I cut him off. Oh yeah, no. Uh, so first reaction to finding out um, 
I think it was as I was reading this chapter about the nine and they talked about a wounding message that you kind of internalize as a kid. And that's where it really like landed for me. I felt like known in a really uncomfortably vulnerable way. Oh, wow. Uh, Because for the, for the nine, that message to paraphrase is something like uh, my presence and opinion doesn't matter that much. Mm -hmm. And I'm Mm -hmm. telling you in that moment, it was like, I was, I was like 12 years old again. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh, I'm, at the time I was 34 um, and thinking, I thought that I didn't feel that way anymore. Like I thought, I remember feeling that way and really struggling with that when I was younger and like in middle mm. school and stuff. Um, like re- that realization of, wow, I have just learned how to manage that. I've never, I've never actually addressed it through high school, through college, through the first part of marriage. Mm. Um, and addressing that and asking God to speak the counterweight to that phrase like that's that's been all the difference in my life these last few Mm. years um and it's affected like every single part of it at the same time i was uh going through the book emotionally healthy spirituality with a group of people and one of the chapters it's so good uh but one of those one of the parts to one of those chapters he actually talked about like these healing messages of like that we need to know and one of them was uh something like you have like god-given power to exert in the world Mm. and that those the combination of those two things like that was Mm. that was a real real big uh change of course for me because when i would fail or not make it like i would get frustrated i would feel guilty i think of the elephant i'm like man that's such a great picture i think of just know that that elephant when it's sitting there feels guilty for being an elephant Mm -hmm. you know like yeah and that and there's this thing where i get i can see all the different perspectives and i feel guilty i can Mm. i can feel guilty in those moments Mm -hmm. for not having those gifts Mm. does that make sense so and so it's another and just so you know guilt is the underlying emotion of 891 yeah yep so yeah so that was the first interaction was just this really feeling known but in kind of like a beautiful way too i'm like oh i'm not like this isn't this weird thing, like I'm not alone too at the same Mm -hmm. time. Yeah. I work with Matt on the creative team and I always tell him like, if his voice was more present, we would be better. Mm -hmm. Um, and you make me better, you know, as we process, I have high eight, seven, so I'm a lot, you know, I tell Maria the same thing. She makes me better. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like the wind beneath his wings and he like calms me down in the workplace, (laughs) you know? So I think there's so much beauty in that when your voice is present, you know, and like when nines speak into the situation, you're just making things better. So I want to encourage nines to do that all the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. And I think that's the thing is I think nines confuse um, energy for wisdom. So like the the eights, the mm. threes, they got all this energy, the sevens, and they got all these opinions and ideas. But don't just because someone has a lot of energy doesn't mean they have the best idea. So exactly. you know, eights <laughs> eights have to, or excuse me, nines have to really monitor their energy output. Mm-hmm. We all do. We we all do. Manage your energy. Um, so you need to know that about yourself, but nines especially have to manage their energy because they have to know, like, um, you know, here's, here's my expectations. Here's how fast, um, my job, my wife, my family, my, I, I need to run. So they have to manage that so that they can do those things. And so, you know, I use the the example, um, I don't think I use it on the video, but I preach at Palm of the turtle. Turtle's not going to sprint, but they can get where they need to go, Mm. but they got to manage their energy. And, um, um, you know, and again, turtles are powerful. We were in Hawaii and these gigantic turtles came up to us and just were bumping us. I think locals feed them. You're not supposed to. And they just like, kept like ramming us. I was like, geez, this thing is strong. And wow. so, um, and persistent, which nines can be when mm-hmm. they want it. Right. So, and that's, that, that's the thing is, uh, you know, and I've had this conversation with Dan. When Dan wants something, he's persistent and hustles and is clear, very declarative. So. Nice. <laughs> so. The, the challenge with nines is motivating them to get to them to do what you want them to do. That mm. that's the right. Yeah, that's the thing is is okay. Hey, you know, get us on board because they can see your perspective, but they also see their perspective. So, um, yeah, I always ask nines like to help me understand in conflict the way I'm coming across. <laughs> like I always yeah. ask Matt, I'm like, okay, this person is feeling this way. What's going on here? And they they're able mm. to see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and a that's a way gift. where I felt yeah. like I can use the gift. We were in a brainstorming session once and had two different people using the same word, but everything was super <laughs> tense, like this thing they were talking about. And I just kind of sat back for a minute and I was like, hold on guys. So when you say this word, you mean this? Yes. But when you say the same word, you mean this, right? Yes. And okay. Now, let, now, now let's move forward because, <laughs> and I was like, oh, that was, 
I do that. Like that was, yeah. that's yeah. the thing I can do, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and know though, Matt, that not everyone else has that gift. Totally. So that's the problem. When the nine is not declarative, no one else is seeing that and conflict will happen. Right. Yep. But it can feel like in your heart that, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to cause conflict when actually what you did is you prevented mm. it by yeah. being declarative and said, hey, here, here's what I see. And, um, and, and we need that. We, we totally, totally need that. We mm. actually had a question from Eric, very similar to what you just said. He said, how do I make declarative statements in conflict without creating more conflict? And how can I embrace conflict when I know it may exclude me from someone's life or deeply hurt their feelings? Dang. Magic. That's the magic <laughs> that's question. A, Thank yeah, you, Eric. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, you have to judge. You have to judge the situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for me, the, my... My unhealthy three judges every conflict by this. What's the win? If there's no win, mm. I, I, I don't. You know, my wife's one. You should. You should. Like, she wants me to challenge everyone all the time, and I'm like, what's the point? Like, if someone's not going to listen or whatever, I just, I'm going to go be somewhere else. I mean, there's just not. There's not enough time in the world to challenge every person. So I, <laughs> I look for the win. So um, number one is relationship. Do you have a relationship with a person? And have they, and again, this is so important in small group. Like recently, Maria, you came up to me and you said, I want to be a better leader. I want you to speak into my mm -hmm. life. Okay, now I have permission mm -hmm. to challenge and speak into Maria's life. I'm ready. That's important. When someone does that, then, then you just would remind them. And I would say, Maria, you know, you came to me and you asked me, here's what I'm seeing. I love you. I believe in you. Mm -hmm. I want you on the team. Here's what, what I'm seeing. Um, here's what you're doing. And, and you know, um, like I have a small, I, in my small group, we have two eights and they're both powerful eights and like i mean it my wife it sometimes it feels like fighting discussion feels like <laughs> fighting in our small group um the eights love it <laughs> yeah oh man you know it's just it, it's just whatever and i've had to go to one and say hey what you were saying was right how you every everything you said was right everything you said how you said it was wrong right i love you but like you know what's your point is your point to just beat this person in submission or is your point to love this person into to making the right decision? Mm. And so, so that's what I would say is it's all about reading the situation, uh, which if you're an eight, you don't do well. Um, so you have to have the nines to help you, you know, have a nine critique, you know, how, how you did, but you have to invite them um, into that. So, so I would say read the situation, read the person and start practicing, right? Yeah. Practice. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't just dive in the first time say, hey, I'm gonna, uh, Matt, I'm gonna practice being declarative on you. Can, can I do that <laughs> and, 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 and practice, you know, um, you know? Yeah. You got, you got to find places where it's like low impact to, to work that muscle out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's, that's in ways of like, Good. like Dan was talking about earlier, when you see all the, the, what I've tried to start turning is when I see all these different options for like, say where our family's going to eat dinner, if all of them are equally as good and none are priority in my mind. I need to flip that from being paralyzing to being empowering of like, so I can choose any of them and it doesn't, and it's fine. Right. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so it, it's taking that perspective and saying like, I can do this and I can um, shift my perspective in that. Hmm. And you find ways outside of conflict to work out that muscle. It's like, it's like going into a competition and expecting to be able to just jump in. Like, how do I do this muscle up in a CrossFit? Thing? Yeah. Well, well, you need to have, months and years of training and practicing and failing at it. Right. Yeah. And I think that's, that's been a big growth point in the last couple of years of learning like, okay, that's something I need to work on. So now what are the moments I can choose that are low impact? And it's not like going to be this again, like kind of to the Adding question, conflict, this relationship right. ending mm -hmm. conversation. Like I need to be setting my intention ahead of time in mm -hmm. making sure that I'm being declarative in the things that aren't going to end a relationship. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. which way we should go, where we should grab coffee. Like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like making those decisions. Mm -hmm. So that way you're hopefully building that up to when you get to a bigger one, you're like, okay, I think I've done this a little bit, still might, won't get it perfect, but I've set myself up a little better. And so I think even the way the question's worded, like thinking of how do I declare myself in conflict is you declare yourself outside of conflict first. Yeah. That's good. So yeah. Here, here's what I would say is, is know the numbers of the people that you're talking to. So, because you need to address each number very differently. So like my yeah. wife says six. So whenever I'm going to challenge my wife, um, I have to assure her in the security of the relationship, mm. and this is this conversation is not going to lead to a divorce or whatever else. You know, I have to make her feel secure. You know, my wife's amazing, but she's not perfect all the time. So I I have to, I have to do that, and um, um, b because like literally fear rules her life, mm. success rules my life in unhealthy ways, and so we we have to be able to do that. 
And so like, if you're confronting a nine, an eight, right, you got to be powerful, you got to be clear, you got to be super declarative, you know, mm-hmm. that's very, very, that's going to be a tough challenge. Here's the thing, though, if you're a nine, people are going to listen because you've never done that before. You're going to be right. like, oh, totally. that's, that's what I was going to say, too. I'm assuming Eric's a nine. Is that a safe yeah. assumption? So I think, you know, I think, too, just trusting, you know, which is another way to say, you know, have faith. Right, we talked about being faithful earlier. You know, faith with action, trusting that God has something to say through you. And so, if you are mm-hmm. careful with your words and not just say a bunch of stuff, you know, you're look, you're listening, you're asking right. questions, you're looking for what what would how would God have me respond in this? And then you're gonna, you know, the more you practice, like Matt Ritchie said, you know, the more comfortable you're gonna become with knowing, okay this is what I need to say. This mm. is what God is inviting me to say. And you'll speak it. And if you're really careful, you'll learn to listen to how you're supposed to say it. And that will be received by the person because not only have you done the job of listening to them and honoring them, but you've been faithful you know, to them and you're being faithful to God as you yeah. are now taking a step out and trusting mm-hmm. that what I have to say matters mm. and the way I'm going to say it, led by the Holy Spirit, will deliver the message that needs to be delivered. Mm. Yeah. Let me so let, let me just run through the numbers real quick. So if I'm confronting a one, I would say, I know you want to do the right thing. Mm. Yeah, that's I good. know that's important to you. Here, here, here's, here's where I think you need to change what you did or what you said. The mm. two, I know you want to help people. I know your heart's in the right place. Here's how I would do that. Here's the three. I know that you want this to be successful. <laughs> here, here's how I think it could be more successful. Here's the four. I know you have a unique perspective. Here's how I think your perspective can be better heard. The five, look, I know you've thought about this for a year, right? <laughs> I, okay, Here, here's how I think you can be more clear. The, the six, I know you're afraid that what you said was wrong. You know, mm. he, here's how I think you can change this or fix this. The seven, I know you want to have a good time, right? Here's how I think we can have a better time. The eight, I know that you want to be heard, but here's how I think people can hear you. You know, the nine to another nine. It's really important that you declare, I, I, I know that you want to avoid conflict, but I feel like your point of view would actually, you know, keep us from conflict. Yes. See what I'm saying? So you use you use the, their core need in every single one to address them. And you just, you just say, it. look, I, I know that this is what's important to you. Here's how I think. Remember, the Enneagram is about motivation. Mm. How do I, how do I take, you know, jujitsu? How do I take your energy and move it in the right direction so that, so that, what not what I want to happen, that's the, the eight, but what needs to happen happens. And how do I move the group? And, um, you know, um, and, and again, mm. and let me just say this not everybody in our church wants to change, grow, love Jesus, and follow God. Right. Like it's just, it, I wish, I wish Sandals was a holy place where everybody loved God and wanted to do his will. Um, but man, that's where right, we're full of sin, we're, we're, full, we're a church full of sinners that need Jesus every day. And, um, and many of the people that go to our church aren't saved. So mm. that's a whole, that's a whole nother challenge. People go to church for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes it's because of Jesus. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so we have a question from Lauren about relating to your spouse Ooh. as a nine. Um, both my husband and I have nine as our highest. So what are some tools to ensure that we don't get lazy in pursuing each other and relationship? Wow. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I think I would just expand on uh, something I touched on in the last one, and that is setting your intention is something that I've been working on. So it's not just having good intent, not just having good ideas, but it's setting that and acting on it. Um, and my wife is not a nine, but she is amazing, incredible, and has helped me in that. And we've actually started using that language with each other, and it's been extremely helpful for our conversations. So mm-hmm. if she's starting to feel as a very high three, like that we're not accomplishing, we're not moving fast enough. It's given her words to to come to me and say like, what's our intention tonight? Mm. Like, which is a way of like, how are we going to use our time and still make sure we're doing stuff? And then, but that's still like, I feel so honored by that because that's giving me the ability to, to speak up, to be heard and to be proactive in setting what that's going to be. And then the other part of that is on my side of things, setting that and knowing going into my week, how do I set my intention instead of reacting and just knowing I have good intentions, but saying I am setting my intention. I'm Mm. making a plan to act on this. Mm. I think that's how you, maybe that could be something helpful for uh, Lauren and her husband, like to say, 
how are we going to set our intention? Because that implies like setting, moving, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. acting on it and not just reacting to each other. Yeah. Yeah, so so the beauty of two nines being married, right, is there's not going to be a lot of fights. Um, the negative is that there may not be a lot of depth mm. because they just avoid the hard conversations, the deep conversations. They just kind of become like jellyfish, right? They just kind of go where the water goes, and that and that's beautiful, but they need to go where they want to go together. And so, um, you know, have friendships with non-nines. Um, that are that are speaking into some of the things that maybe you're missing and not seeing. So, you know, this is a thing that, you know, if you're a young person, I always hate it when young people, when they're dating, they say, we have so much in common. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, that, that's beautiful and great. So hopefully you have your faith in common, you have morals in common, like, like but not like dumb stuff like the beach and movies hiking. and hiking. And, <laughs> um, you know, because, um, you know, what, what, what you want to do is you want to have God in common and you want to have the pursuit of each other in common. And so mm-hmm. for nines, I just think you can you can very easily slip into a lazy pattern where right. you can drift apart. So a nine's not, they're not going to grow apart because that requires effort, right? They're going to drift. And all of a sudden, I don't know you, we're not connected because we didn't like, what, what would you say? Uh, just set, set my intention. Set my intention. So that's really, really important. Um, you know, and his wife's a powerful person. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's really, really important. And so, so how do two nines hold, that's the challenge, hold each other accountable to set the intentions. Um, like we were in small group for three years with a right. nine who every single week would talk about, I drink too much soda. Remember? Yep. And it, I, I, I'm, li- I'm literally like twitching because 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 i want to go over to the house and freaking throw every soda can yeah, out of the house it. and just, just just get it done yeah like i, I don't want to hear one more week about your coke right. addiction and i like soda pop coca-cola addiction. coca-cola yeah. Coca-Cola. you know because I'm, I, I, I'm just like this is this is driving me crazy and that's the that's the challenge of the mm. nine is they can know i need to exercise i need to yes. get out i need to get off the couch and and mm. that was a very unhealthy nine in our small group who's an amazing person robbing the world of her beauty. Right. Because she was unhealthy. And I'm just like, I'm I'm literally like banging my head against the wall. <laughs> so, so, and that's the challenge is like nines, if they're unhealthy together, they're going to talk all day long about what they should do. Yeah. And they're not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that word intention is really yeah. important because, you know, we can, we can want to do all kinds of things, but remember... I, I, I liken it to like Mr. Magoo. I feel like a little bit like Mr. Magoo sometimes. Like I'm just sort of wandering, you know, but the intentions bring me back to focus. Um, you know, this is what I intend to do. And so actually on that, what you said, Matt Ritchie, I actually wrote a prayer for myself one time called the prayer of my intentions. Mm-hmm. And I would read it because remember I talked earlier about being sort of lazy in prayer. Mm-hmm. So I took the time to pen it out over multiple days. These are right. my intentions every day. Mm-hmm. And I would read it multiple times a day and go, that's right. This is what I'm about today. This is what I need to be, you know, include things like my relationship with my wife, my relationship with my children, my my relationship here to my work and the things I'm doing at Sandals Church, my relationship to God. Mm. You know, it was a it was a pretty lengthy prayer that took me honestly about five or six minutes to go through mm-hmm. uh, each time I did wow. it. But it kept it kept that that passion right in front of me. Right. You yeah. know, which is so important. So I'd say to the to the question asker, mm. what was your name again? Lauren. Lauren, just be like Matt Ritchie said. Be clear on your intentions, and then keep them in front of you regularly. When we get home today, w- this is what we're going to do. We intend to spend time together, and here's how we're going to we're going to agree upon. This is how we'll spend time together. Yeah, I, I would just say a great example is so, so like nines, um, unhealthy nines can struggle deeply with addiction. So like if if you're mm. a nine out there and you smoke weed, quit. Like that's just not going to help you. With, with with your struggle. Your um, numbers. Yeah. Uh, so. Also, also, you know, like, for example, instead of maybe having a glass of wine and talking to each other, go for a walk. Right. So do something active to right. where you're actually moving and you're doing something. And, and so, you know, um, try not to have, you know, too many deep moments on the couch. Get out, yeah. walk, go, go to a park, uh, watch the sunset, go to the beach. Like, so, so do active mm. things together Otherwise, like I said, you're going to drift. So, and 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 the negative about drifting is, it can move you so fast, and you were doing nothing. Right. And that's the thing that's so scary about life is, people just drift. 
and um, and and we do that in relationships. We do it with our kids. Um, you know, we just we we just drift, and we and we got to be really really careful. So I would just mm. pursue active things. Be intentional. Um, you know, we want to you know get the TV out of your bedroom. We you get, get rid of your phones and and really really connect mm. um, and, and do active things. So yeah, that's so good. Like pursuing health for a nine. We had a really good question. I mentioned this to producer Kelly and Jacob, who does brew with the crew. And they were like, Oh my. <laughs> so here, here comes the oh, kicker comes. guys. Ready? <laughs> um, so Ashley says, how do I actually know what I feel so that I can declare it? Mm. She she says, I tend to be very empathetic. I see so many people's feelings. I feel people's feelings. So I actually don't know how to know what I feel personally. Right. So I can declare it. Such a good question. Yeah, well, I, I just think, I mean, that's that's the trap of the nine is you get so in tune with everyone else, you're out of tune with yourself. And so here's the beauty of her statement. She's actually aware. So mm. that, that, that that's the, the, the scary thing for a nine is when they're unaware that they don't know how they feel. That that's, that's even more of a challenge than at least her, she can say, I'm not sure how I feel, which is that that's that's a, a baby step towards awareness. So why don't you guys handle? Yeah, that? I would say um, in your in your declaration, like declare that I don't know how I feel. Yeah. Ask somebody to help you discover how you feel. I mean, hmm. there's that's th that's a healthy move actually. If we we were sitting and talking and said, I would say I'm feeling something, but I'm not sure what it is. Then you mm -hmm. and your training, Maria, you would start to ask me questions. Mm -hmm. You know, you would, and and I think in that in that discovery process, you'd help me get to a place mm -hmm. where I could finally say, yes, I feel fill in the blank. Hmm. Right. And so be careful, you know, an eight's going to tell you how you feel. So, <laughs> so be really careful. Yeah. Find a good uh, listener. You know, one's, a a one's going to tell you how you should feel. Right. Uh, I mean, so you really, you really, really got to be careful um, that you find a, a good listener, a good question asker and, and listening's a gift. You know, I had a pastor tell me, he, he said, yeah, I've had all kinds of classes on listening. And I said, well, I took five years of Spanish and my Spanish is better than your listening. So, <laughs> right, just just because you, I'm oh, sorry, that's my eight. That's funny. Just because you, I thought it was funny too. He, he, he didn't get it. You know, just because somebody's taken a class, right, doesn't mean yeah. Yeah. they're good at it. So find somebody who's a gifted listener mm. and, you know, you just don't want that counselor that's just, mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you want but active yeah. listening. You want active listening and yeah. say, "Okay, hey, let's go back to that. Let's 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 ferret that out." And and a good process uh, for discovering how you feel is just mapping. Go back and map your life out. You know, sit down with somebody, go through some counseling, and do a life map where you look at what's happened in my life. Because the enneagram is one part, but your life is the other part. Mm -hmm. What's happened mm -hmm. to you? What what took place in your life? And um and that's just so important to discovering. And it's easier if Matt says, when I was six, this happened. And I can say, hmm, how did that make you feel? Right. Because it's easy to reflect back than it is to reflect in the present. So here's the beauty of reflecting back is it teaches me how to feel. Oh, that's how I felt. That's what I thought. That's how it made me feel. And so what I'm doing as I'm going through a mapping session where I map my life out it's training me to be aware of how I'm feeling in the present. And that's just, it's a good. great, easy, easy technique. Um, and if somebody says, so if Matt says, um, I don't know how that made me feel. Well, w I would say, okay, well, what would a six year, what should a six year old feel if he's high one? Right. Hmm. So let's, let's divorce Matt from himself hmm. and let's talk to a six year old. What, 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 how should a six year old feel about what happened to them? What's a healthy response? And then, and then try to get them, to speak to, I mean, it's just, it's just a really, really helpful thing. And, and because a lot of us grow up in homes. So Matt said, uh, how I felt and what I thought was unimportant. Yeah. Is that my, what you shared? My, when you read that. Yeah. My opinion and my presence. My opinion and my presence are unimportant. Yeah. And so, it's, so here's the negative of that. Is it not only does it become unimportant to me, but it becomes unimportant to him. That's where it gets lost. Right. Mm -hmm. that, that that's where you lose how you feel. Well, it doesn't matter. My opinion, and my presence don't matter. So why should I? Why should I take note if it doesn't matter to you? Why should I take note of how I feel? Right. So and yeah. so right. So um, so then we can go back in Matt's childhood. When's the first time he felt unimportant? What wait, wait, wait. your opinion didn't matter and your presence didn't matter? And then we can say, well, should it have mattered? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, and I know Matt's parents. I love them both. So. But, 
you know, they're awesome. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they are really incredible people. So let's not. Yeah, I. No parent is perfect. Um, you know, yeah, and you can't. <laughs> and yeah, and you can't read your children's minds, man, right. right? I mean, you know, you don't. No, nobody Amen. knows. Nobody knows what they're doing, <laughs> man. When they handed me Madison, I had never held an infant in my life. Really? D- yes. Until that point. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Listen to me, single guys. Go hold a baby. Yeah. Wow. Go. Go volunteer. Go in volunteer <laughs> in flip flops. And and, wow. and I'm telling you, th- 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 nobody knows anything, dude. I- I'm like. I never had held a child, never Ooh. babysat a little kid. Infants are terrifying. <laughs> I bet you were so. I would poke them because I was like, are you dead? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're alive. <laughs> Jeez. Tammy's like, why'd you wake the kid up? I was like, I thought oh, she was man. dead. <laughs> all, all new parents are afraid right. their baby's yeah. dying in the crib. Uh, you get a couple in, you get over <laughs> that initial feeling. Next, well, next the, time, just put a mirror under the nose. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, um, I, so I'm going to totally nine this and bring another perspective to answer this question. <laughs> awesome. And uh, one thing that I heard it described one time that the work of the nine is like you're standing in front of a mirror that's foggy and you can't see yourself clearly. And the work of the nine is to unfog that mirror wow. for the course of your life. And it's hard work. Mm-hmm. And that... A, a good part of that some is intentional like i'm intentionally saying i'm not important but then the other part is you get so used to acting and thinking a certain way and that is seeing everyone else's perspective see their gifts and stuff like that that you may need actual physical space away from other people to get a bearing of it mm-hmm. and i think like a funny way of like, like i didn't watch a lot of seinfeld uh, and so i feel a little out of the loop when people talk about it but there was one episode where one character was just getting like railed on, like getting made fun of in front of all these people and he had no comeback. And then he's really dejected, drives away and he's almost all the way back home. And then he comes back with like his zinger, like, oh yeah, well, blah, blah, blah. and I feel like that as a yeah. nine where in the moment I'm like, oh, okay. And because I'm just like reading yeah. the room so much. And then I, there's been a couple of guys that I've talked to that maybe have like some of the same concerns and, like maybe you just need to ask like, hey, can I just have like five minutes like mm-hmm. to take a walk? And then that's been really helpful for me. I love the um, the UCR Botanic Gardens in Riverside mm-hmm. here. It's been like a really great place for me. Like mm-hmm. some days I'll just need to go there for an hour. And then I feel like so much more clear headed mm-hmm. and so much more aware of where I'm at. I feel grounded in like what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, which then always makes the conversation better, right? It's not going to help anyone else feel any better about how I'm interacting with them if I don't know where I'm coming from. Because yeah. I think we kind of say like, oh, it's okay if I don't know because I'm going to make sure that everyone else knows. Right. And so that's, that never helps that's the conversation. That's the nine five. So let's say he's a nine seven. It's not the botanical gardens. <laughs> okay, he's he's going to go surf. He's going to go ride his bike. Escape. He's yeah. going to, yeah, yeah. He, he's going to go do something incredibly fun. And in that moment, he'll be able to reflect yeah, and find right. himself. So that, nice. that that's why yeah. the numbers are so so important so you're a nine what nine well nine six five are my top three okay yeah the, and what matt's talking to is the contemplative aspect of the nine right so whatever it is if, if it's botanical gardens go do that if it's surfing go do that i mean find the thing that that um fuels you where you can have that solitude or alone time with god and talk to him about it mm-hmm. like i don't know how i feel I, i've heard all these things and I'm, I'm processing this stuff now and and then you can have that that contemplative mm-hmm. time that mm-hmm. thoughtful time mm-hmm. yeah. to talk with the lord about it Man, that's so good. I love that foggy mirror. Like it's hard work. Right. right. But if he's yeah. at nine yeah. four, it's artwork. Right. So he needs to go paint. He needs to go whatever. He's nine two. He mm. needs to go serve. He's a nine three. He needs to I don't go know. Go hike a mountain or something yeah, like that. Yeah. I think the biggest thing something. in that in that side of things is sometimes like uh having someone process with you like isn't gonna be the answer. Sometimes you need to kind of have yeah. some way of being a way that makes sense to you to collect your thoughts. Because I remember thinking yeah. that way at the beginning of the year, trying to take stock of how did last year go? How can I set my intention for this next year? Um, and my wife, who's a three, like it is amazing. She wants to support me in that and do that. But in the moment we were at dinner and she was like, all right, let's talk about it. Like, let's yeah. talk about like what those intentions are. Let's <laughs> let's yeah. knock it out together, which is amazing. And I need her, her passion and her energy in that way. But I was able to tell her in that moment, I'm like, that's, yeah, I can't do that right in this moment. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm, present like we're at we're at dinner together and i'm i actually don't want to try to figure that out with you like i want to just be present with you here and so i think uh yeah you just have to be uh careful of you want to i think you had a point about not pushing the nine to sprint and so right. you want but you still want to call them forward right you know what i mean still call them into action still call them forward but just don't go into like 
I had a, I had a nickname uh, when I worked at UPS, Loading Boxes, and it was Turbo. Hmm. <laughs> and it was not because of <laughs> how, fast, how fast I was. Yes. Yeah. Do you, know Do you ever mean? see that snail movie where yeah. the turbo is the well, snail? Well, you have Turbo the so snail good. and then uh, Flash the sloth from Zootopia. Yeah. Right? I have lots yes. of... Oh, my gosh. Lots, the he's DMV. Still, well, because you think about it, that sloth still is moving somewhere and intending to do something, but it's at this pace that just is like imperceptible to everyone else. It's like, come on. And I think... Um, turbo. Yeah. So it's that's just funny. Like, it's like Turbo. It's so funny. we had a couple questions about nines as leaders. Uh, Kristen and, and Fredo um, said about the same things. But this is what Fredo said. Given the strengths and weaknesses of the nine style, it seems we aren't quick to identify them as strong leaders like eights or threes. But you referenced Abraham in mm-hmm. your sermon on Sunday. Can you shed light on what makes nines effective leaders and how they can develop leadership like Abraham? Yeah. So the nine has to be able to quickly discern the situation. So I think the nine has to has to say, okay, I don't want to fight. But if I have to, I have to be fierce. So what does Abraham do? So uh, Lot is captured. Um, all of the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah are defeated. So what does Abraham do? He rounds up, I can't remember if it's 300 or 400 men. It's three or okay. 400 men. And he goes and he wins. He defeats five kings, and they're led into battle by a nine. So nines can be fierce when they're bought in and they believe they have to do that. Um, the, the challenge for the nine in leadership is challenging people. Is challenging them because oftentimes, you know, especially if you're managing threes, sevens, eights, you're going to have to challenge them to go faster than you're going. But that's that's what they need. And so um, a, a nine can hold back other personality types because they're exhausted by the pace that you're running. But what so what a nine has to do is it has to allow the other personality types to run at their pace and figure out how do I challenge them as a unique person. And the mm. thing is, um, like you're a seven, eight. What did you say you yeah. are? Okay, so you 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 said I want to be challenged. Okay. She came to me and she said that a nine doesn't naturally think that. And it, here's one of the key leadership mistakes that I think all young leaders make is I'm going to treat others the way I want to be treated. People do not respond to that way. So like when I manage an eight, I don't want you to come up to me and be like, you know what you should do, you know, and you know I I want options and. Eights, hmm. man, right? Okay, we're going at it, yes. and I'm going to declare, and I'm going to say, <laughs> and here's what, here's the way it's going to be, yeah. and they're going to push back, and uh, no, 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 you know, and it, <laughs> you just, I, I call eights weeble wobbles, right? You know, <laughs> boom, and they're back up, boom, and they're back because wow. that's that's who they are. You that's know, what you're high for. <laughs> okay, like like our press, our I wish our press would read the enneagram because like. Mm. Trump's at war with Canada. You know, he, he's <laughs> right. He, you know, he's just yeah. on the I docket mean, next. Switzerland. How is that even possible? Right. But, you know, he just woke up that morning and he's freaking Canada. Boom. You know, <laughs> and it's not that he wants to go to war. It's just that's an eight. Yeah. You know, you guys are sticking it to is you're putting a tax on our milk and our grain. Let's go at it. Right. And, you know, yep. I mean, you know, he just it, it's just that's how an eight mm. goes. So you just got to keep punching, keep punching, keep punching. Uh, and just know if you're a nine supervising eights, it's going to be a real challenge because mm-hmm. they are the challenger. So it, it's finding your place, finding your being, being honest about your pace. Yep. What can you do? Um, you know, and, and just knowing that you have to challenge. So I think the mistake I've made is sheltering nines from conflict, which is m- makes them makes the relationship codependent. You have to you have to press them into that because the mm-hmm. way the nine's going to learn is the longer I avoid conflict, the worse things get. Mm. And so, um, so, so, so this is right. So if their motivation is peace, they're going to fight, they, they will fight, but the motivating factor has to be peace. And so, um, but I think nines can be effective leaders. They have to be super healthy, super declarative and aware of when they're running and avoiding conflict mm. because managing people is conflict. You know, not everybody wakes up wanting to do everything that they want to do. You know, my son, every single time we ask him to scoop the poop, he has attitude. Man, that dog's gonna poop tomorrow and the next day and the day after that. You're gonna scoop poop until you move out, or the dog dies, which I think he probably prefers. <laughs> <laughs> the latter. Right? Yeah. So, you know, but you know, I just have to know, because what a nine will do is, well, I'll just do it myself because I don't I don't want to deal with the attitude of the mm-hmm. kid. I'd rather pick up crap than deal with crap. Yeah. yeah. And so that, that, that then then what the nine does, right? So you talk about energy and pacing, then they're working at a level they can't sustain because they're 
they're working hard to avoid conflict and they're doing everybody else's job. And, mm. and that, that's a real problem. And so mm. nines have just have to be learned to be clear and declarative and, um, and decide, you know, it's deciding what's right. Right. Cause they're like, well, and what, well, well, you know, at some point you, you gotta, you gotta make a decision. I, I would say this, you know, um, at, at best the decision is, you know, 80% chance of being a good decision. And cause I used to think it's a hundred percent. Well, then you'll never, you'll never make a good, de- you'll never make any decision, you, you know, mm-hmm. come up with a percentage of how you feel like, yeah, this is right. And then, and go with that mm-hmm. um, because you'll be paralyzed. And I was, when I was a young leader, I was paralyzed. I felt like I had to be a hundred percent convinced. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I would say on that too, I think, man, on the decision piece, we've had a lot of conversations about this, you and I, and it is being decisive, you know, but remember the the nine sits in the gut triad. So trust your gut as you've gathered the information, mm. trust your gut yeah. and then, but, and, but make a decision. Yeah. Don't just sit there and go, well, I'm still, I'm still trying to think about this. No, no. Make the call. I would say another thing too, just to kind of tack onto what you said, Matt, is to know, know your lane mm-hmm. and stay in it. I mean, as Sa- I've been here at Sandals now for 13 years, you know, I've been on staff now for almost 10. And so as my, as we have grown as a church, you know, I, when I started, I had so many responsibilities and departments under me. And some of those I was looking forward to releasing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I couldn't wait to get this off my plate. You know, and others, it was like, "What are you? What are you doing? Taking that from me? Yeah. That's mine." Yeah. You know, yeah. and but it, they were hard conversations with Matt or even with Pastor Dan Zambardi. It was like, "You're good at this, and you can do this, but you'd be better mm. over yeah. here." And it's trusting the, the leaders in front of you to say they see you. Yeah, that's hard. You know, <laughs> and this is this is your lane. Mm-hmm. This is the lane you actually belong in. Or, you know, and so I think that's a big piece know is when know your lane. Yeah. And if other things are given to you to do, you, you still need to get them done. Nobody wants to scoop the poop, right? Right. But but the beauty of, of at least working for a church, right, is we can we can bring others onto our team. They're called volunteers, right? We can delegate those types of things. But do the things, I think, as a leader that, that we're supposed to do, you know, and then motivate others to do the things mm-hmm. that they need to do as well. So, yeah, so I, I think what he said is great is as most nines – are not going to thrive in the senior leadership position. That's just the thing. Where I think D, uh, Dan is just such a huge asset to our church, especially like when I think of an issue we had a couple years ago where we had two young leaders in our church having conflict um, and enormous conflict. Dan was able to go in, assess the situation, come back and give us feedback of who was right. And nice. he did, Yeah. but then it was on me and Dan Zimbardi to move in and then ultimately to terminate Decision, yeah. uh, one of the employees because the, there was a conflict between two. And so, right, so the beauty of the nine is it, the nine really is in pursuit of truth. They're, they don't have a, a natural uh, horse that right. they got money on. Whereas I think most of the other personality styles, like we're rooting for one or the other, the nine's kind of like, well, I just want to, and, and he really did. He fared it out and, and it actually flip-flopped. I mean, we thought we were going to have to terminate one employee and he came back to us and he's like, that's not the problem. It's the other one. That's the problem. And then we were able to move in. But Dan's ability mm. to to not to negotiate, but to draw out the heart issue and the real issue was amazing. Yeah. Um, but it's not Dan's specialty. I don't think Dan wakes up in the morning. Yeah, I want to fire somebody. I don't think that's either of your guys' desire. <laughs> Um, Can you we know, all just get along? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. And 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 then wouldn't that be great? Right. But unfortunately. Mm. You know, I, sometimes I like that, right? we don't get along. And so you got to have somebody that goes. Mm-hmm. And I, I've gotten more and more uncomfortable. So the three, as you study the arrows, when unhealthy, we go to the nine. And so uh, a three can avoid conflict if they feel like there's no win. Mm-hmm. And so we, I had to do that when I had a, an employee on staff for about 10 years that, you know, we were very, very close personally. And I, I just couldn't see a way out. So I just avoided it. And what, what it ultimately did was create a huge, pro- huge problem. And actually, Dan Crowley... Mr. Peaceful is one of the employees that came to me and said, this is a real problem and you need to deal with it because it's creating, but, but his motivation was it's creating division. Mm -hmm. He's saying it's create, you're, you're avoiding this painful issue is creating division within the church. And so after we dealt with it, um, that specific employee went off, did their own thing. Our church doubled in one year after we dealt with that problem. Wow. So think about what it was doing to us as an organization, hmm. sideways energy, not, not, not handling it. And, um, and it was Dan Crowley, a nine, uh, and his wife, Christina, uh, three, four. Three, three wing four, yeah. Three wing four. 
uh, that came to me and said, this is a problem. Mm. And, you know, we've, right, like we've seen both sides. You need to deal with this. You need to handle this. And, um, um, mm. you know, wow. so, but that's, that's Dan's maturity and, and, um, you know, cause leadership. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and just yeah. so you know, you know, man, I, if you're not in leadership, you know, when you fire some, somebody or you, I, I don't think anybody has ever said, thank you so much for terminating me or firing me. No. Like nobody, if people saw it your way, they would probably change, right? Yeah. Unless they're crazy. <laughs> and then that's a whole nother problem. But but typically people, people don't see what you're seeing. I mean, I don't think most people act out of evil. It's ignorance. They're just, they're, they're, they're just not seeing um, or, or they're unclear or, or they're in the wrong, they're in the wrong job. Hmm. And, uh, and that happens sometimes. I mean, you get, you get fooled in an interview right. and you think somebody's going to be really great at something. And, you know, if, you know, you're, you're, you're asking, uh, you know, a, a duck to do something that a duck's not made to do, it's going to be a problem. You know, yeah. you know, if you're ac asking a, an elephant to sprint in the hundred meter dash, not gonna happen. He needs to, the elephant needs to be in powerlifting, you know. I mean, so so that's just I'm the thing. Going, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, going. Yeah. Look out. <laughs> yeah. That makes I'll me think of a. Uh, there's a quote from MLK that's been really meaningful to me, especially this last week or two, and it's that genuine leaders are not searchers of consensus, but are molders of consensus. Mm -hmm. and I think consensus is like a really key thing for Ooh. a nine. They really desire that. But I think I know in my life I've spent so much energy searching for it mm -hmm. instead of molding and kind of catalyzing like mm -hmm. good some you know what i mean some consensus in wow. that and i think that is such like i and i don't say that as like someone that's figured out is like i'm literally in the middle of figuring out like what does that look like in my life and how mm -hmm. do i do that more effectively um and then, and then the other thing for thank you sorry I'm, no I'm that's okay <laughs> no i appreciate that uh and the other thing uh that would help i think nines as you try to lead people is you need to because of the way both uh, we're perceived, but then also the way we just are naturally more like laid back and easygoing. You need to connect with your excitement and your passion mm. more. Mm. And that's something I've really been trying to to connect with mm. too, as I lead a team of volunteers, yeah. as I'm part of leading, you know, uh, what goes on musically that um, there's, there's, there's power there. That's, that's natural when you're mm -hmm. excited about something. Mm -hmm. There's confidence there that's natural when you're excited or passionate about something. So it's finding those as a leader and saying like, these are things I'm excited and passionate about and see how does that affect and flow out like mm -hmm. to the people that you lead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's so good. Before we ask the final question, is there any other thoughts or words of wisdom, famous last words for the peacemakers or relating to the peacemaker that you guys like to say? I'm sure I'll come up with something, but you know, first. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say I really appreciated that Matt, at least on the the recorded version of the sermon that we that we saw this this weekend. Uh, you mentioned at the end that where so many other people see in black and white, nines see in gray, mm -hmm. um, and it's taken a while, honestly, for me to to embrace that and be okay with that because because again, I felt guilty. Because mm. I'm like, I, I don't, I just see all this gray, and everyone else sees black and white. Like, what's what's wrong with me? Um, and someone encouraged me recently that the in the gray is where grace is found. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And like that's that's a that's a beautiful in something where it feels so misunderstood or so misconstrued, like what your intent is. And it's on us for not setting that proactively. But even in that, that feeling, man, knowing that it's it's a special gift of mm -hmm. grace to be in the gray. Mm -hmm. And you have to you have to be okay with that. And you have to be at a point where you're comfortable like giving that to the yeah. world because mm -hmm. we, because we need more grace. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Maybe I should have gone first. That was really <laughs> good. <my routine. laughs> yeah. No, I, I, you know, I just, um, it's very easy, I think, to look at the, the brokenness of our number on a regular basis. And, uh, and I want to kind of piggyback on what Matt Ritchie was saying. It's just that there's a lot of beauty in the number as well, you know, and for those of us who are nines, you know, we are, you know, and I mentioned it earlier, we are more prone to contemplative type work, mm -hmm. you know, and God is, God is hard to get our hands around, right? We can read about him, we can learn about him, we can talk about him, we can, we can know a lot about him, but knowing him is really difficult. Mm -hmm. Like actually, how do we experience him? And, and then identifying that experience. I think it, the nines are just naturally more mm -hmm. set up for that, you know, and so if you're a nine, you know, or you have some nine in you, um, man, embrace that is such a beautiful part, I think, of, of, of our number and where we sit. You know, our ability, to, like Matt said, in, in, the, in the gray is where grace is found. That's, that's where God is. Like, mm -hmm. he's there. He's waiting for us. He's calling to us in that place. And we can meet him there and we can actually experience him there. We can mm. know him there, not just know about him. We could talk a lot about, a lot about what grace is. 
but until we experience grace and identify it and say that was God's grace and then love him in return, like that's an amazing thing. Yeah. And so I think the nines really have, uh, I'm just gonna say they have a leg up on the rest of yes. the other numbers and that they can do that more naturally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More yeah, naturally. I love my nine friends. You guys help me do that all the time. I feel more centered even in this episode. Wait, wait till we get to Israel, Marie. We're lots Here we of fun. go. Here, Here we, we go. go. Are, you're going? I am. I didn't know that. Yeah. I haven't gotten into Israel meetings. I was a, I was a late addition. <laughs> it's Thursday, Matt. This yes. Thursday. We're, we're bringing you up to speed. Right so, on. Pastor Matt, this is sad to me that our series called You has come to a close. This is yes. our last episode. It has been so amazing. Mm -hmm. It has been so rich. I've learned so much even today. Um, but now that we've gone through each type, we have a question um, that we're when we're in community and we're aware of what healthy and unhealthy look like, how do we continue to pursue that with all of our numbers? Um, what are some good uh, last words of encouragement for us as we pursue um, being real with ourselves? Yeah, just, you know, again, so I, I think that there's always two sides to all of us. I mean, some of us need to be challenged because we think we're awesome. And some of us think we're worthless and we need, you know, we need to be loved and, and grace. And just, just figure out where you are on that. I think all of us are going to be more prone to focus on one or the other. And so, um, so if you're more prone to the negative, make sure that you're, you're digging into the positive and that you can be declarative about the beauty of that. If you're more prone to just the positive of what you do and, you know, make sure that you really, really sit and resonate with, you know, some of the brokenness and, and, and try to figure out how that brokenness works itself out and people experience that in your life. Um, but what I would just say is this is a lifelong process. You know, I, I, I would be really disappointed if you tried to work on all of this stuff and you took the test again, 12 months expecting radical change. Yeah. I think that God, right. Changes us over time as we continually mm -hmm. surrender things to him. And, um, you know, there, there's, there's just things in my life. I, I turned 47, which is just weird. Um, this last week, but there, there, there are just some things that, you know, um, that I've dealt with in my life and that I, that God has, uh, healed and, and, and brought, um, I think transformation and I'm like Christ in, in many, many areas in ways that I wasn't in my twenties and my thirties, but there are still some things in my forties that I wish weren't there. And there's still some darkness and some things that grieve my heart that I, that I wish that, um, that I would ha have dealt with. And so, um, so what I what I'm having to do is is change my strategy in a bit because my strategy is not eliminating, um, you know, some of those things. And so, um, just mm -hmm. just give yourself, you know, give yourself grace, but also, you know, be um, intentional about what your intentions are, and you want to change, and you want to become like Christ. And again, not everyone in our church is trying to become like Christ. Um, all of us, you know, I I thought about doing this, but you know, if you draw a circle, you know, on a piece of paper and you write things in my life like Jesus. There are some things in your life that are like Jesus, but there are some things in your life that are not at all like Jesus. And, and those are the things that we wanna change. So we wanna celebrate mm. the things that are like Christ. And then we want to begin to um, work on and ultimately destroy those things in our life that are not like Christ. And um, and again, we're, we're all uh, bipolar in our relationship to <laughs> Jesus. We all are. There are things that are very much like our faith and there are things that are just not like our faith and so um so so begin to work on that list on the outside and 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 also you know I, even if things are on the list that are like christ it doesn't mean that god can't grow those and, and make them better i mean right even if you're a very loving person paul's prayer is that your your love would abound more and more there's another more after that so keep working on those things and so you know, my hope is, is that, you know, as a church, we will continue to grow in our relationship with Christ. We'll mm. continue to deepen. Um, and, and here, here's the thing. Some of you don't know what you need to grow in because you're not reading your Bible. Mm. That's where you find out what needs to change. God is declarative in his word to you. Um, you know, even if you're not a big reader, you, you've got to start because God is a God of his word. And if you're not reading his word, you're, you're not following him. You're not getting to know him. And so it's just so important. Baby steps, stop what, you know, eliminate a show, um, some stupid game on your phone and just start slowly reading. And, um, you know, I said this a couple of weeks ago, um, but at first everything's going to be confusing. And anytime you start something, it is, and you're not going to understand, pick a very simple translation, the easiest translation, you know, go to, Lifeway and say, I want the easiest Bible translation to read and buy that one hmm. and start there. And and here's the thing is, um, I was sharing with you guys before, you know, we, we got into puzzling because um, 
dementia runs in my family. And so one of the things that um, helps your mind as you age is puzzles. And so I started doing puzzles and they're extraordinarily frustrating <laughs> and difficult. And, and when you th first throw all the pieces, nothing makes sense. But after you stare at it long enough, you begin to see things you didn't see before. And that's what happens with the Bible. Mm, just keep amen. seeing things that you missed before. And so just know that as you read through it, you know, like I said, um, I got a new Bible about six months ago. And so there's no notes in it. And I'm just circling new things that I'd never seen before. And mm. just so amazed at, at, at what God's um, doing and revealing to me. And I, and I don't know how many times I, like I have read First Corinthians. I don't, I don't know how many. I, it more than I can count, and I'm discovering just new things. And so just know that, that God's going to show you uh, through his word and through his spirit what needs to change in your life. Mm. And and don't run from conviction, celebrate it, because when you're convicted, it means God's talking. Amen. And that's the beauty, and uh, that's one of the things that we've mm -hmm. lost in the modern church is just that spirit of conviction. And, um, uh, you know, we're all sinners, but some of us have no idea where, where, where that's manifesting itself. Mm. So. So anyways, you know, I, I've loved this series. I think it's blessed and helped a lot of people. And, um, yeah. you know, so keep growing. And uh, and again, be real with yourself. Study yourself. Learn yourself. You know, that's so important. Self-knowledge uh, will lead to God knowledge. It just mm -hmm. will. So you have to you have to know yourself to, to truly understand God because um, you are the key factor in understanding God, right? So if you're, if you're off, God's going to be off. And... Um, you know, I can't tell you how many people see God in their own image, which gives them the wrong image mm. of God. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, so Jesus says, if your eye is dark, then even the good in your life becomes bad. So you've got to change your vision. And so I think the Enneagram is a great tool yeah. to change your vision. And thank you so much for taking us through this as a yeah, church. On behalf of the church, we've loved it. Yeah. I think you've helped us see ourselves better, and that's so good. Yeah, so I want to thank uh, Kelly Welzell, who is, I don't know what her position is at our church. She's the Director of Connections, I think. There we her. go, Director of Connections, <laughs> and then my wife, Tammy Brown, who did a lot of work. Matt Ritchie also was a huge contributor to, um, you know, so much of my sermons was written by them. Mm. So, I mean, you know, I, I picked the characters and the stories, and obviously I preached them, but a lot of the work and the content was uh, produced by them, so I'm very, very thankful to them, and just amazing, amazing people who were behind the scenes working so hard to make this happen. So just super, super thankful for um, them. Yeah, cool. And thank you, Matt and Pastor Dan, for joining us today. It's been yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, and well, goodbye, everybody. <laughs>